Norway is an unusual country. I've heard a great deal about it all my life. You see, my parents were born and raised in Norway. They lived in northern Norway, and I guess it's only natural I'd want to visit their homeland. About one-third of Norway is located north of the Arctic Circle. The location of the Arctic Circle in Norway is marked by a very simple monument. It took me four days driving from Oslo, and mostly over bad roads, to reach this monument. Most people who travel this far north come to see the midnight sun, and while I'm up here, I'm going to try and film this unusual phenomenon. My parents have told me a lot about the country and the Lapp people. Northern Norway is relatively desolate. The people here make their living off the land. They do a lot of fishing. The growing season is too short for much farming. Goats are the important livestock. Goats can live by eating almost anything. Goats provide the major source of meat and milk. Norway is populated both by descendants of the Vikings and also in the north by an unusual nomadic people called Lapps. Surprisingly, the Lapp language is not at all related to the Norwegian language. Their everyday clothing is very colorful. Each Lapp tribe wears its own distinctive pattern and colors. The Laplanders must learn to travel swiftly under all conditions. Their main source of income is raising reindeer. The Laps graze their reindeer throughout northern Russia, Finland, Sweden, and Norway. Reindeer can live on anything, the same as this friendly goat who's trying to eat my lunch. But by far the most important feature of northern Norway is the midnight sun. The midnight sun is a consequence of the tilt of the axis of rotation of the Earth. During the northern hemisphere's summer, the tilt of the axis is toward the sun. Thus, the northern part of the Earth is continuously exposed to sunlight. The tilt in the Earth's axis of rotation always points in the same direction with respect to the fixed stars. The direction of tilt does not change as the Earth moves in its orbit around the sun because of the law of conservation of angular momentum. When the Earth has moved 180 degrees around the sun, the tilt in the northern hemisphere is away from the sun. The northern part of the earth is in the shadow. In winter, the people of northern Norway live in darkness. As the earth completes its orbit around the sun, summer arrives again in the northern hemisphere. Norway becomes the land of the midnight sun. The land north of the Arctic Circle is exposed to sunlight. At lower latitudes, for example Paris, night comes for some Earth rotation angles. It is this unusual phenomenon of the midnight sun that is the primary reason for my trip north of the Arctic Circle. There is only one road in Norway which goes this far north. It is narrow and cluttered with livestock. That pile of wood on top of my car is parts to a tripod I built. I designed it particularly for this trip. It took a lot of study. You see, I want to try and take a movie of the midnight sun. I have seen a sequence of still photographs of the midnight sun, but I've never seen a movie of it. My first attempt is at Buda, located just below Narvik. Buda has a very nice view in the northerly direction. I found a hill just outside of town from which to try first. I started sequence filming at about 10 o'clock at night and stopped at 1 o'clock in the morning. I took this shot by taking one exposure every 15 seconds. As a result, the clouds appear to move quite rapidly. Unfortunately, the clouds obscured the sun. I find out that the reason we do not see more pictures of the midnight sun is because the weather is often cloudy around midnight. I am beginning to wonder if I'll be successful at all in my attempt. I waited three nights for better weather in Buda without success. I decided to drive farther north in the hope of finding a good view and better weather. I arrive at a place which looks as if it will have a good view. It is on high ground, and although it's cloudy when I arrive, it is supposed to clear. I begin the hard work of transporting my special tripod to high ground. On the route to the hill, I meet a local Norwegian girl dressed in a bunad. 
A bunad is a Norwegian festive costume. The girls make these dresses during the dark winter months when there's not much else to do except stay inside and sew. The patterns for bunads are an expression of the individual girl making them. Even so, each locality tends to have its own characteristic pattern. The girl assures me the hill will be an excellent location from which to observe the midnight sun. It took me seven trips to carry my supplies to a point of land overlooking the ocean. It took me two hours to assemble the special tripod. The geographical location is perfect. There are a few low islands to the north of me, but these are quite far away. They will not obstruct my view of the sun when it is low at midnight. I am ready to film at 11 o'clock in the morning. The weather is perfect. At this point, the sun is overhead. I am using one exposure every 30 seconds. Thus we see three hours time in about 15 seconds on the screen. I am following the sun with my camera. The sun is coming down in the sky and moving to the right. Now it is three o'clock in the afternoon. The weather is still good. I can hardly wait to see if the sun really does stay above the horizon. At six o'clock in the evening, the weather is still good. At eight o'clock in the evening, clouds begin to appear and I am worried. The clouds move fast because I'm taking one exposure every 30 seconds. Now it is 10 o'clock in the evening. The sun has not set. And now it is midnight. The sun is still above the horizon. Now it is one o'clock in the morning. The sun is climbing back up in the sky. We have watched the sun continuously for 16 hours, from 11 o'clock in the morning until the next day at three o'clock in the morning. The sun has never set. This experience has led me to appreciate why Northern Norway is called the land of the midnight sun.